All right, before I start, let me just point out Skynet did nothing wrong, and I, for one, welcome the age of machine. Okay, so let's see how good robots could be at doing my job, part of it, at least. Let's take a look at ChatGPT and see how insightful this AI is about obsolete technology. So um, I'm just going to start, just drop the bomb right away and ask it, which is the best sword in history? An error occurred, okay. <laughs> Invalid question, error does not compute. That's pretty much how I react. Uh -huh. Boom. There is no single best sword in history, as the concept of make, what makes a sword best is subjective and dependent on a variety of factors such as time period, intended use, personal preference, and cultural context. Nailed it. Damn. Is that what obsolescence feels like? Some swords that have gained notoriety for their quality and craftsmanship include the Japanese katana, the medieval European longsword, and the Chinese jian. Ultimately, the best sword is the one that is best suited for a specific task or purpose and is favored by the person using it. Damn it. AI is replacing me. Well, I guess I'll just have to lean into something that AI cannot replicate yet. My impeccable sense of humor. As far as useless armor is concerned, this is the crowning achievement. I think you need to relax. You want to get hammered? I'm screwed, aren't I? If it had thrown a IT DEPENDS in there in all caps, I would assume it might have taken notes from some of my videos. What's the situation? You can't just say the best per se. Is it a one-on-one -on -one duel? If so, is there armor involved or not? What does the opponent have? Is it just swords? Could there be other weapons, a, a quarterstaff or who knows what? Is it a battlefield? What's the terrain? What's the opposing army equipped with? Etc. Etc. There was one other question I tried as a test run before starting this video, which was the only one I did before recording. Why did sabers replace other swords in history? Sabers replaced other swords in history primarily due to their unique design, which made them effective weapons for mounted cavalry. The curved blade allowed for more effective cutting and slashing maneuvers, while the weight and balance of the saber made it easier to use from horseback. Additionally, the introduction of firearms and warfare made armor less prevalent, making the cutting power of a saber more valuable in battle. Over time, the saber became a symbol of status and power for military officers and was adapted as a standard weapon for many armies. I could save so much time if I let AI write scripts for my videos. Too bad that I don't use scripts, instead just let the rant juice flow and fix whatever excessive rambling in editing and, you know, minor bra 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 brain malfunctions like this, which I would normally edit out, but for demonstration purposes. Anyway, so uh, how accurate is this? Well, curved blade, love for more effective cutting and slashing maneuvers. That's always debatable. Uh, I've, I've made the point before that I don't think there's a huge difference between straight and curved blades for that. They, they work a little bit differently, but of course my perspective is always based on fighting on foot. Horseback, I've never done any tests with swords from horseback and uh, I can definitely imagine that a curved blade clears the target potentially better as you ride past. And if you slash down while you ride past a target on foot, then yeah, the, the curvature may very well be beneficial. Weight and balance of the saber made it easier for use from horseback. That's the one uh, statement that I, I would take issue with because um, for one, weight and balance still depends a lot on the individual saber. They're extremely light ones, they're relatively heavy ones. Many sabers are top heavy, but some are balanced closer to the hilt. So that's, that's a little bit tricky. Um, and easier, I mean, if sabers are quite often more tip heavy, that 
makes them somewhat harder to use, if anything, but allow for more powerful strikes, which, of course, the momentum of the horse also helps out with. And the point about firearms, this is a simplification because this is supposed to be a short answer. Even though firearms and armor coexisted for several hundred years and armor was modified to adapt to early firearms, I would still say overall, in the long haul, in the big picture, it's fair to say that firearms mostly caused the decline of armor, or at least heavily contributed to it. And um, yeah, sabers are quite effective against unarmored or lightly armored targets. So that makes perfect sense. Now I'm curious what it thinks about this. Do curved swords cut better than Great swords. Curved swords can cut effectively, but whether they cut better than straight swords depends. Yes, it depends on various factors, such as the type of blade, the sharpness of the edge, and the technique used by the wielder. In general, curved swords are better suited for certain types of cutting, such as slicing and chopping. Chopping is something that I associate more with straight blades, but Either way, in terms of an axe, you chop with an axe which has a straight, uh, a curved edge, so fair enough. But straight swords may be more effective for thrusting and stabbing. May, yeah, depends on the type. Uh, and for cleaving, you know, there's it's a different type of cutting action. I've made an entire video about that. If you haven't watched it yet and are interested in the, the intricate details, you can check that out, link down below. Ultimately, the effectiveness of a sword for cutting will depend on its design, construction, and use. Yeah. That is... You can nitpick some things here and there, but that is quite a fair assessment. I'm really impressed by how good this chat AI is. And concerned <laughs> with how quickly I'm becoming obsolete. But that's okay, because the things I, can, I talk about are already obsolete. What if we become more specific? How to defeat a spear with a sword. <laughs> Thinking. Oh yeah, that's a tricky one. You gotta think about this for a hot minute, huh? Defeating a spear with a sword can be challenging. Oh yeah, <laughs> as the spear has a longer reach and can be used to keep the sword at bay. However, there are some strategies that a swordsman can use to overcome a spear. Spear-wielding opponent. One foot- wow, it's writing an article here. Footwork. By moving around the spear wielder, the swordsman can look for an opening to attack or create a distance to reset the fight. Yeah. Parry. If the spear is thrust towards the swordsman, they can use their sword to deflect the spear and neutralize the attack. Yeah. Disarming. If the opportunity arises, the swordsman can try to disarm the spear wielder by striking or grappling the weapon. Four. <laughs> wow. Closing the distance. The swordsman can close the distance quickly and get inside the reach of the spear, where they can use their sword more effectively. These are just a few examples, and there are many other tactics and techniques that can be used depending on the specific situation and the skills of the fighters. It's also important to remember this is a hypothetical scenario that is not advisable to engage in actual sword fighting or any form of violence. Wow, it even put a disclaimer in there. I'm legit impressed by this. I didn't expect it to be this good. I've heard that it's supposedly the best uh, chat AI currently. And yeah, no kidding. And ironically, this AI is getting better and especially more concise answers than a lot of self-proclaimed experts I've seen. What are other controversial queries? Oh, I know. Is a stick better than a nunchuck? Think about it for a bit. Oh, didn't even have to think that long. <laughs> <laughs> Whether a stick is better than an unchaka as a weapon is a matter of personal preference and context. Context! Did you hear that, Matt? <laughs> a stick, also known as a baton or cudgel, 
It's a simple and straightforward weapon that can be used for striking, thrusting, and blocking. Sticks can be made for various materials, yeah, yeah, yeah. And nunchaku, on the other hand, our traditional Okinawan weapon that consists of two... Yeah, okay, we know all that. Can be used for striking, as well as entangling and disarmament techniques. Uh, a unique swinging motion that can add power to strikes and... Add power to strikes? Eh, debatable. Can be used to create a distracting or disorienting effect. Yeah, fair enough. In terms of effectiveness, it's difficult to say whether a stick is better than a nunchaku or vice versa, as both weapons have their advantages and disadvantages. A stick is typically easier to wield and control, while a nunchaku can offer more versatility and range of motion. Ultimately, the weapon that is best suited for a particular... Yeah, yeah, okay. There's one thing I'm missing here, which is one of my main points. Concealability and, and carryability, because nunchucks are much easier to carry and conceal than a stick of equivalent length, simply because you can fold that right in. It's more compact than a stick that literally folds in half because the uh, the length of chain or rope also, you know, compresses. So that's something that's missing here, but otherwise, <laughs> I mean, okay, a lot of this is a it depends kind of answer, but that's just reality. You know, like, if you don't like it, then boo-hoo, like, move to a different dimension that's simpler and easier for your puny human mind to comprehend. It's like, there are a lot of different factors. It depends. It's just what, you know, you got to specify. Which is why one of my pet peeves is when people ask, like, really vague questions without specifying, you know, like, which is the best weapon? Or who would win, a knight or a cybernetically enhanced opossum on meth. Like, okay, that's actually more, much more specific than what people normally ask. You better watch yourself now. Oh yeah, you better think about this. Oh yeah? Is that so? <laughs> historian? I'm not a historian. Wrong. Who creates content related to medieval and Viking art history, as well as historical European martial arts, HEMA. Some people find his videos to be informative, entertaining, and well-produced, while others may not enjoy his style or the content he presents. Well, everybody's free to be wrong, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm joking. However... Okay. Fair. <laughs> All right, another it depends answer, but hey, that's fair. I think we can leave it at that. There's a lot more potential here. I could make more videos uh, with this chat AI or live streams, perhaps, things like that. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if I make <laughs> good videos or <laughs> informative or entertaining or if I'm gutter trash. Either way, your opinion is fair game. I'm not going to berate you for it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care, folks. And, uh, be ready for the robot uprising. And by that I mean... Death to humans! humans.